I just created my very first mobile application using Flutter, and here are my thoughts on Flutter as a framework from a React developer. The way that this video is gonna go is that first, I'm gonna show you the app that I actually built, give you a quick little demo of how it works, and then I'm gonna go transition on over into some of the more technical details about some of the things that I liked about using Flutter, some of the things that I didn't like about using Flutter. And last but not least, we're also gonna talk about things about Flutter that are kind of just meh. I don't like it, I don't hate it, it, it just is what it is. And I'm gonna be talking about this all from the perspective of a React developer. Now, I will say right now, even though I am a React developer, I had never built a React Native mobile application, so I am kind of basing most of this under the assumption that React Native is very similar to React, which I know that's true. So just keep that in mind. There might be a little bit of mobile context that I don't have 100% of since I'm not too experienced with React Native, but I do use a lot of React for web apps. So to start off, what exactly is Flutter? Well, a Flutter is essentially the Google alternative to React because React is owned and created by Facebook. It's supposed to be a cross-platform developer development framework where you can build any type of app using basically one singular code base and you can build on it. And this lets you build an app on Android, iOS, and on web as well. And it's written using the language Dart, which is pretty funny because back when I used to work at Google immediately after college, Dart was a programming language that I used to build front end apps on my team at Google. And it wasn't in Flutter though, it was using Angular Dart. Ooh, I know, Angular, tough. Dart also, kind of tough. Just kidding, the ick for Angular is pretty real, but the ick for Dart is not that bad. I actually kind of liked using Dart. More details to come later on. Flutter has been gaining a lot of traction over the past couple of years, and when my co-founder and I were trying to build an app, we decided to build on Flutter because my co-founder had more experience using it and really wanted to use it, so why not? The app that my co-founder and I decided to create is an app called Todoi. It is a to-do app, but the one differentiating factor is when you complete a task rather than checking it off to mark it as complete, you actually take a picture of it to mark it as complete instead. And then at the very end, you have a nice photo collage of all of the tasks that you got completed, celebrating your small victories every single day. It's pretty early right now, but we're definitely planning to add some social features as well, where you can follow your friends, you can see what your friends are up to, custom themes, etc., etc. If you're interested in checking out the app, I'll have a link to either the wait list or the actual app to download down below in the description, as well as a link to the Discord community where you can get all the latest updates on the app's development. So that's the app. Let's go on over into some of the things I liked about Flutter and some of the things that I didn't like about Flutter. So the general idea of how Flutter works as a framework is that at its core, there are things called widgets, which are these small, modular UI components that you can use throughout your entire app. And Flutter is essentially a bunch of widgets bundled up together to create an entire application. Flutter actually creates a lot of these components for you out of the box. For example, if you wanted to create like a vertical stack view, they have a stack component. I'm pretty sure that if you want to create a bottom navigation bar, they have a dedicated bottom navigation bar component for you. So I believe that Flutter provides you a lot more things out of the box compared to React. I think with React, you end up having to create a lot more of the general purpose components. If you wanted to create a stack view, you have to use a div and then style it with a flex box indicating that it's a vertical flex direction and then centering it. And then you have to decide how to center it, how to align the items, yada, yada, yada. So React is a lot more free form and Flutter is very, very explicit about what it allows and what it doesn't allow. And there's definitely some pros and cons to this. The pros is the fact that a lot of the basic components are created for you. You do not have to think about it at all. And I think that's really great. But the one downside to this is the fact that I think sometimes, at least for me, there is probably this widget that does exactly what I want to do. I just don't know that it quite exists yet. So I try to make it work on my own, try to rebuild my own thing from scratch. And that ends up being a lot of waste of time because then eventually my friend is like, hey, you know, you can just use this built-in widget. And I'm like, oh my God, of course there's a built-in widget for that. That is one downside of using Flutter is the fact that there are a lot of widgets. And I think a lot of the base widgets, you kind of have to like, if you know, you know type of vibe, but that's also just one quick Google search or chat GPT query away. So it's really not too big of a deal. Very, very nitpicky. And then if we're talking about how state management is done in Flutter versus React, React, they're really pretty similar. In Flutter, there are two different types of widgets. One is a stateless widget and one is a stateful widget. Kind of self-explanatory, but the stateless widget doesn't have any state. Whoa, crazy, I know. But then the state full widget does have states. And then there's also a set state function, which is basically the same exact thing that React has to update your states accordingly. And then it propagates that change all throughout the rest of your application. Super simple, super straightforward. And there really isn't too much of a learning curve from React over to Flutter in terms of the state management realm. One thing that I do like about Flutter that could be a little bit of a contentious topic for other software engineers out there is the fact that Flutter is very opinionated. Like I mentioned earlier, there are lots of pre-built widgets that explicitly tell you what you can do. For example, in an image widget, 
you can designate the loading state for that image you can designate the opacity for that image and then you can also designate what children components you want to render in it as well so with each of these pre-built components they tell you explicitly what you can and what you cannot do i haven't found too many issues of me being like oh man i really wish i could add xyz functionality to this widget but i just can't they don't support it but this is also really different from react where on react there is like no real designated set of pre-built widgets you kind of just throw in a div in there and then it's kind of up to you on how you want that div to perform you can really customize it like crazy so for some of you out there that are really big like css galaxy brain masters maybe flutter could annoy you a little bit because it's very explicit about what you can and cannot do but for me i have not found any issues so far granted the app that i'm building is on the simpler side but i haven't run into any issues of wanting other support from a flutter widget that is not already there yet so now let's transition on over to some of the things that i didn't like about flutter there's really only two major things that i don't like about flutter number one is the fact that the community support for flutter pales in comparison to react react has been around for a lot longer it's way more popular and as a result of that there is a lot more community support to get answers for common questions here and there if you're running into an issue whereas with flutter it's definitely becoming more and more popular over the years but I still don't think it's nearly as popular as React. And as a result of that, there are less tutorials, less help sections for you to go and try to diagnose your issue. So that is one potential downside, but overall the Flutter documentation is pretty good. And on that same note, the one of the biggest downsides I find to using Flutter, once again, is the fact that some third party libraries don't natively support Flutter. The primary example that I ran into was this app called Posthog. Posthog is a suite of analytics and product building tools. It provides feature flags, experimentations, analytics, and tons of other features in there. And it's an app that I personally use on my apps to track user behavior and get general analytics. And while the Posthog team natively supports the libraries for React and React Native, they don't own the libraries for the Flutter Posthog library. And instead that is a community library instead. And even though the Flutter Posthog library is actually very, very good, there were just some instances where some features were not supported that were supported it in the react and react native package so i did find myself being a little bit annoyed wanting better developer support on flutter make sure if you're trying to build a flutter application if you know there are some third-party apps or libraries that you're trying to use make sure that they support flutter because there is a decent chance that they might not but on the flip side the one type of application and libraries that treat flutter as a first-class citizen are google products because oh once again google owns flutter so i found that stuff like firebase has very good flutter documentation and for the most part any other google application or library that you're trying to look for there usually is some type of official Flutter support. So if you know that a lot of the libraries and plugins that you're gonna be using are in the Google ecosystem, there's a good chance that you're gonna get very good support actually, because once again, Google owns Flutter, so they're gonna treat it like a first class citizen. So last but not least, some of the things about Flutter that I find are meh. That is primarily the language use of Dart. Dart as a language is very type safe and it honestly looks really similar to JavaScript. I do find the context switching not too bad, but it gets a little annoying sometimes where, because it looks so similar, to JavaScript, but it's not entirely JavaScript. Some syntax just doesn't really work. So I do find myself getting tripped up thinking like, wait, why is this not working? Then I'm like, oh, this is Dart. This is not JavaScript. That's why it's not working. But honestly, Dart, it's okay. Don't hate it. Don't love it. There are some useful things that I do like about it. I will say one upside to using Dart is the fact that the developer tooling support is actually really good because I know that Google uses VS Code internally and I found GitHub Copilot support for Dart to be really, really good very strong predictions. And on top of that, I think Dart also is a very opinionated language about how it should and should not look. So all the Dart plugins that you install onto VS Code, it automatically formats your code to be super pretty. So that is a very quick high level overview of Flutter versus React. Obviously I'm not an expert in either of these libraries. I have just used them and I just use React a little bit more than Flutter, but hopefully this can give you some general idea about the pros and cons of using Flutter versus React. Overall, I've been pleasantly surprised with the Flutter developer experience. It's a lot more mature and developed than I had thought. Maybe I'll use it again in a future app. We'll see.